Okay, I'm going to talk after this very nice talk of Marcus on a little bit different type on the lateral clavicle fractures. They occur mostly in men between 30 and 50 years, and the second cohort are people older than 70. And these are typically two different groups, and probably they need different treatment as well. They amount about 10 to 30 percent of all the clavicle fractures, but the non union rate is much higher compared to the medial and middle clavicle fractures. Uh, we are familiar with the near classification that was the developed uh, classification with three types. Uh, Craig at Craig uh, adapted it and described five types. There is an AO classification and Robinson also made a classification. It is the <coughs> mostly used near Craig classification. You see the type one, the, uh, the type two, A, medial to the ligaments, the type 2B, in between the ligaments, the type 3 is an intraarticular fracture. It's a little bit wrong picture because the, it is not where the uh, epiphysis is. It is. The epiphysis is more lateral. And when it is epiphysialized, it is the type 4. And the type 5 is where a fragment is still attached to the ligaments and the two other fragments are displaced. The near Craig, especially, these are quite frequent, the type 2, the A, and the type 2B, as I described. The AO classification is a little bit more simple, but uh, not very easy to use, basically, because here is the description being medial to the ligaments here, extra articular, partial articular, and completely articular. I think that is not a very convenient classification. The same for the Robinson one. He divided between cortical alignment or displaced fracture. And it is also not so frequently used. So let's maybe talk about the near Craig classification. However, even the near Craig classification and the AO classification, the inter and intra observing liabilities is rather low. So we should be aware on all sort of articles and lectures on the lateral clavicle fractures because the definition might be different in different articles. Well, what is generally the treatment algorithm? The type 1 is stable and you can leave it alone. They will heal because the ligaments are intact and normally the AC joint is intact as well. The type 2A is unstable. Normally it needs operation. You see here a picture of a non-union with a dislocated clavicle, and they can be painful, but uh, not always. The type 2B is also unstable, where the coronoid ligament is torn, and you should operate this one as well. There is a type, a variant of the type B. Sometimes the CC ligaments are torn as well, and it is an example where there is a type 2 uh, fracture that had been repaired, it was not distinguished at the beginning, but after the plating, there was a full dislocation of the AC joint, and it was treated with, an, uh, with a dog bone. So you should be aware that in some cases, the type 2 has a variant with torn CC ligaments. The type 3 is an interarticular one. It is stable. You can treat it conservative. It might lead to early uh, AC arthritis, but that is not always significant clinically. The type 4 is epiphyseal fracture, normally stable. You can leave it. There might be a little bit of malunion, but normally in these young patients, you get a remodeling of the clavicle on the long term. The type 5 is also unstable. It, it was an early uh, X-ray after the injury where it looks stable, but after one week it was unstable, and normally it needs operative treatment. Well, there are many, many treatment options in the uh, lateral clavicle fracture, non-operative, uh, just only CC stabilization, intermedullary, interfragmentary fixation, key wire and the stension band wiring, and more recently the plates. Interestingly, this is a study of Robinson where he treated 100 patients uh, in all types of lateral clavicle fractures non operatively. He only did secondary surgery in 40%, and in one out of five there was non union. And the constant score was not different in the union and non-union group. It was a middle-aged 
group mean 45 years old. So maybe in younger it might behave, patients it might behave differently. Well, this is a little bit old-fashioned, the Bosworth screw, Bosworth screw and uh, cyclage or key wires, and more recently the buttons or the uh, lockdown. Here's an example where the button is uh, joined with a tendon to, uh, well, in case the button may wear out, the tendon will replace the CC ligaments if they are torn. There is our question if it is needed when you repair a fracture, if this stabilization is really necessary. Well, this is very old fashioned intramedullary fixation, and even if the screw tends are chromial, but I think that is outdated. It's a very elegant way to treat the fractures with intrafragmentary uh, suturing, and uh, the, that could be done arthroscopically, like Marcus showed, but it is very elegant, and you don't have to remove any implant. Well, the, the plates became popular the last 10, 20 years. The locking plates, here are some examples. Locking plate combined with a fixation of the, of the uh, 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 reconstruction of the CC ligaments with the tight rope. This is an interesting plate, especially in comminuted fractures. This Japanese plate, Scorpio, is compressing the uh, multi of the comminuted part of the lateral part and the might help improve the stability. And you can adapt a radius plate with, with oblique screws in these cases where you want to have a more wide fixation of the lateral clavicle. Well, the hook plates have been developed, I think, or I think originally developed in, in Germany. There is a uh, difference in step off. It's quite important when you use the hook plate to have a proper step off. If you are too if your step off is too small, you can get wear of the acromion, usuring of the acromion. If it is too large, it might compromise the cuff, although it is a little bit more posterior where the cuff is. Uh, but nevertheless, you can have problems with a too large step off. Well, the advantage of the locking plate, they have multiple small screws and you don't have to remove it. But the disadvantage is that there is a rather high failure rate in the poor bone, as shown here. And this is a nice study, and there are some, some other studies where it is shown that the lateral clavicle has a very low, has the lowest bone mineral density, which might jeopardize your uh, fixation in the lateral part of the clavicle. The hook plate has some advantages. The, if you have a comminuted lateral fragment, you don't touch that fragment. The disadvantage is that you have to remove it. It might cause impingement, although there are studies where they did an arthroscopy after removal of the plate, where there was no problem, no pathology at all of the cuff. Well, at what, I thought, what I said, you can get the erosion of the chromium if your step off is too small, or you can have a clavicle fracture, a stress fracture, if not, if it is a rather weak bone. Like shown here, on the right you see a dislocation, and in theory you see the erosion if your step off is not properly chosen. Which is the best of the two? There's a systematic review uh, quite recently with more than 500 patients with lock and plate, CC fixation, hook plate, tension band wiring, and transacromial pinning. They compared it, looking only to the plates. The lock and plate did better in the UCL score than the hook plate, and there were more complications in the hook plate compared to the lock and plate. And another systematic review, they compared uh, also the hook plate, lock and plate, CC fixation, and tension band wiring. The union rate and the clinical score were for both plates the same, so you can get very good results in, with both devices. But the hook plate had significantly more complications, and included in the complications are the, uh, the removal of the plate, which is a secondary surgery. So my personal preference is look, uh, locking plate or CC stabilization when the fracture, is, uh, especially the type 2, is feasible for it. Uh, I, and I use it the locking plate in the, uh, not uh, in the multifragmented lateral part or when there is severe osteoporosis. In this case, I use a hook plate, but I use them rather rare. And the locking plate or CC stabilization with the uh, dog bone is uh, quite convenient. This is an, uh, 
picture of the patient who had been treated four times earlier for his lateral clavicle problem. And before coming to me, he had this very nice uh, tattoo. Thank you very much for your attention.